Okay, my name's Andy Green, I'm CTEX Marketing Manager and I'm here to talk about our new Hush range of fire alarm solutions. That's one of our new Hush buttons. Um, the version you can see here is just one version. We have got some other versions coming along with a slightly different, uh, more subtle label as well. Um, in the first instance, I'm going to talk about Hush in a standalone environment. So what you can see here is a dwelling. Okay, there's the entranceway bedrooms here, kitchen, living room here, and the bathroom separate here. Uh, as you can see, there's the hush button in the entranceway. And in this particular scenario, hush is a grade C alternative to a grade D fire alarm system. That's the BS5839 part six. Grade C means it's got certain advantages, such as fault monitoring of all the devices and wiring. So for example, should a head be removed, a detector head be removed, it will flag as a fault on the actual hush button. That is brought to the attention of the dwelling occupant. They can then come along, press hush, which will silence the fault for 24 hours. The idea being that within that time, they contact the landlord or whomever, and they come along and sort the fault out. If they do not deal with the fault, in another 24 hours, that fault buzzer will sound again. And it will automatically clear when the fault is clear because it's non-latching. So that would give indication if maybe somebody's removed a detector head or something like that. But that is only within the dwelling. Okay, so what else have we got on here? Well, we've got the fire level 1 and fire level 2 scenario. Okay, so fire level 1 could be an optical uh, detector or the optical element of the multi-sensor triggering in, uh, in, in the kitchen maybe. That's a fire level one. And that will sound a tone. Okay, that can be hushed by the occupant, pressing the hush button, which can be situated at floor level or reachable from floor level. So there's no having to climb on a chair to silence um, a device that could be on the ceiling, which is often the case with grade D systems. Okay, the, uh, the system is consistently or regularly checking to see if the fault clears, or the fire clears, sorry, the fire level one. If fire level one does clear, the hush button will return to its normal state, and that can take anything between maybe 10, 15 seconds. It all depends really when the smoke clears. Okay, now there's also the fire level 2 trigger. Now fire level 2 would be if maybe the heat element of the multi-sensor that is situated in the dwelling's entranceway triggers. Now in that situation, it cannot be silenced. So fire level 2, this goes off. You can press hush, it will silence very briefly, but we'll come back again. Okay, and that is just, I'm ret returning the system to normal there now. Okay, so that is a grade C solution, standalone, hush button is self-powered, as you can see. There is a battery on the back, um, that'll give you 72 hours standby time. There's also a test facility on here as well. So, in this situation, if I, you know, the, the, the system's in its normal state, you come along and you press the test button, that will run through fire level one, fire level two, which is a different tone, and it will eventually reset. And the lights are also flashing there as well if you had visual alarm devices fitted. Okay, so um, fire level two, which was a sounder there, could actually be a voice sounder, so it could be a, a message that's clearly telling the occupant what to do, but in this situation, we're using tones. Um, very, very easy to install. Once it has been installed, all the installer needs to do to learn the devices is press these two buttons together, and as you can see, the lights are now flashing, and you will get a binary uh, indication of the number of devices that are fitted. So on this system, I think there's five devices all together. So in a moment, they will flag 
that's one, two, four, eight in binary, so it's flagging five devices. One, two, three, four, and I think the switch is down as another one of the devices. And it really is as simple as that. So that is the hush system when it's used in a standalone situation. You can do things on there as well, such as do uh, set it up so that if there was a fire level one or two, or however you see fit, a cooker shut off relay could uh, trigger to, to, to cut the power to the cooker. Um, and that is it really. Um, what we'll do now is we'll talk about hush when it's used as part of a bigger solution, um, when it's connected or when multiple hush buttons are connected to a landlord or communal system. Okay, so as I explained, the real power of hush comes when it's connected to a communal fire alarm system and is used maybe in, in purpose-built blocks of flats within tower blocks. So what we have here on this particular scenario is uh, an individual dwelling unit there, similar to the one I was talking about before, and that is one dwelling within a floor within a tower block. So that's apartment 501 which is here on floor 5 of this particular tower block. Um, and in this tower block there is a communal fire alarm panel or system fitted, which is a ZFP fire panel. It's one of CTEX running the CAS protocol. Okay, and that is optionally connected off-site to a monitoring centre. So, all of these individual dwellings that you can see here will have their own grade C hush system in there, uh, alarm and detection system, uh, all powered from the mains in each individual dwelling. But they are now all interconnected by one of these devices, which looks a little bit like a hush button, but it's uh, basically an interface unit that sits on the addressable loop and uh, is connected to each individual dwelling within the apartment block. So everything is now being monitored. Okay. Now in building such of this, which are purpose built, there is often compartmentalisation. So each individual dwelling has got some form of protection that is designed to stop the fire from spreading. And in most instances that works fine and there's a stay put policy employed in these particular sites. Oh, famously and sadly however there has been uh, occasions when stay put has bro broken down for a variety of reasons. Grenfell possibly being the most famous. Um, so what we're doing now is we're using the very various hush systems that are installed within the dwellings and the communal monitoring system to we believe enhance stay put and provide an alternative uh, a safer alternative should stay put breakdown. So you've got your individual dwelling, um, should there be a fault in the dwelling it will re be reported within the dwelling but because this is now being monitored by the communal system it's reported on the display of the fire panel and off-site as well. So somebody off-site would have notification of the fact that there's a particular fault in this dwelling. Maybe somebody's removed the detector head. As I mentioned before, the, uh, the faults are non-latching so they will eventually clear as well. Um, so that is the monitoring that you would, you wouldn't get that outside monitoring when it's a standalone system. You've also got your fire level 1 and your fire level 2 scenario as well. Now a fire level 1 as I explained earlier is something like the heat detector in the kitchen triggering, sorry, the optical detector, the kitchen triggering. So if we trigger fire level one, there are no alarms on this particular, or alarm devices on this particular rig we have here, so we're showing a fire through lights. So in this dwelling now, the alarm, fire level one alarm is sounding, and that's signifying it on floor five. And fire level one, it could be a false alarm, and typically is, it isn't reported at the panel, although it is logged there, but it is reported off-site. So the monitoring centre would have an indication that there could be something that could develop into a fire there. In most instances, if somebody is in the dwelling, maybe they've burnt the toast, they would simply silence the hush button and it would eventually clear and the system would return to normal so it's not impacted on anything other than the individual dwelling. Of course, if nobody was in the dwelling, that fire could spread. It could ultimately sp spread to the hallway 
and the heat element of the device in the hallway could trigger. In those instances, it's likely to be a true alarm condition. And would it not make sense to maybe warn other areas of the building that there's a potential fire or there is a fire? What we are doing here now is we are using the cause and effects at the fire panel to warn other rooms or other dwellings if there's a potential fire. So in this scenario, it's a true fire, the heat detector is triggered, fire level 2 goes and the cause and effects are set up to trigger the alarm devices in these rooms too. So the tone is now, the fire level 2 tone is now sounding in these dwelling units. It could of course be voice alarm as well, but it, we're saying it's just tones at, at this particular juncture. It is reported on the fire panel display and it is reported off-site as well. Fire level 2, it's a real fire, the fire brigade can now come. Now you don't necessarily have to warn other rooms in this vicinity. You may decide because there's a risk of smoke coming through this dwelling door here that maybe you warn these automatically or you may want no automatic evacuation at all. You may want the fire services to decide and that's often the case in these purpose-built blocks of flats. So the fire services, they're now aware of what's going on, they've been called out, they've got the information from the monitoring site and they can look at the display and they know how the fire's developed, the fire has developed. What they can now do is use these key switches that are, have been programmed at the fire panel to evacuate individual floors as they see fit, should they desire or should they require. So at Grenfell, it was obvious stay put was breaking down. The fire services had to climb the stairs and start knocking on people's doors. Here, they can simply turn a switch and utilise the alarm sounders that are in each individual dwelling unit to evacuate people on a particular floor. So they may decide to evacuate floor five, and again, that's being logged off site. Fire rises, of course, so let's get fire uh, floor six. Let's evacuate floor six. Let's evacuate floor four. Or they could, should the need arise, do a full evacuation, simultaneous ev evacuation all at once. Again, every single activation of a key switch is being logged here off site as well. So hopefully and eventually they will clear the fire condition and the system can return to normal. Because there is a communal fire alarm system here, you can do all sorts of other things too. You could have detection devices within the different um, communal areas. You may want to monitor the sprinkler system, either within each individual dwelling or often that can be just, uh, you know, if it's on a on a floor by floor basis, the controls, that the flow switches, etc., they can be monitored via the communal system. So all in all, it is an all round solution. Um, all activity is logged, faults, fire level one, fire level two. You can see if something is spreading, uh, the brigade can be called and they can then take control and evacuate the premises as they see fit. Um, that, in a nutshell, is hush.